the custom in our country to pause annually at this time of the year to reflect on the contribution of our national heroes who by virtue of their unbridled bravery, fierce determination and patriotic zeal led the process to secure freedom and later our independence and brought autonomy, pride and self-confidence to Jamaica land we love. I think my presentation can be distributed now. As such, it is fitting that the political leadership who represent the people in this honorable house, named in honor of one of our national heroes, join me in my call to the nation to give due recognition and appreciation for the sacrifices they made. Once more, we celebrate the proud heritage they have bequeathed to us and which this year we dub resilient and strong. Aren't we resilient and strong? Through the tenacity and militancy of these heroes, brokered on the platform of resilience, strength, and fearlessness, they were able to resist, renounce, and repudiate the efforts of then colonial powers and enslavers to dehumanize and disenfranchise them and ultimately upend the systems of the tran transatlantic trade in Africans and racialized chattel enslavement. Madam Speaker, I refer to our acclaimed national heroes, Nanny of the Maroons, Samuel Sharp, Paul Bogle, George William Gordon, Marcus Messiah Garvey, Norman Washington Manley, and William Alexander Bustamante. These men and one woman were determined at all costs to confront the crimes against humanity perpetrated against our ancestors before 1838 and the freed people of Jamaica thereafter by way of pernicious acts aimed at undermining and devaluing the humanity and dignity of our people. Madam Speaker, it is through annual observances like Heritage Week, which was established by former Prime Minister, the late, most honorable Edward Siaga, that we cement our proud heritage, especially in the psyche of our children and generations to come. This is why my ministry has been relentless in creating moments and spaces for our Jamaican people to remember, recognize, and revel in the achievements of our heroes. In this regard, I want to use this occasion to advise this house and the nation that in response to my request as Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment, and Sport, Sir Patrick Allen, Governor General of Jamaica, has issued a proclamation that as of this year, the 11th day of October, which is tomorrow, the day of the Marant Bay War will be observed annually as Paul Boga Day. <laughs> Madam Speaker, let us pause to recall the stuff of heroes. Bogle assumed leadership among the peasantry of his community and parish and engaged them in a series of actions aimed at peaceful resolution of the situation. On one occasion, Bogle endured the arduous 45 miles journey from Stony Gut to Spanish Town to seek audience with then governor, who refused to see him. Undaunted by this rebuke, Boga decided to engage mass protests as he sought to confront the conditions of the people of St. Thomas and Jamaica in general. It was one such march on October 11 from Stony Gut to Morant Bay that led to incursions and skirmishes with the state and which culminated in the courthouse being burned to the ground in what became the Morant Bay War. Bogle had aligned his destiny with the struggles of his people and for that he was executed on October 23, 1865. Madam Speaker, I'm pleased to be able to proclaim Paul Bogle Day even as some of the dreams of Paul Bogle for better working and livable conditions of the people of St. Thomas are coming to pass. 
The story is told that the Jamaica House of Assembly passed a resolution in 1865 to punish the people of St. Thomas for their action, determined by the parish would see very little de the development. Madam Speaker, the government of Jamaica, led by the most honorable Prime Minister, Holness, have broken that curse. Very soon, the people of St. Thomas will have greater access to the commercial center of our country by way of a new highway. And further, also the development of the Morant Bay Courthouse into a modern museum. And I want to thank the Prime Minister for leading this charge. This will no doubt enhance the quality of life for the people of St. Thomas going forward. So tomorrow we will celebrate them and the entire Jamaica by the proclamation of Paul Bogle Day. Madam Speaker, as I reflect on how heritage is constructed, how we may have come to be seen as one of the world's most formidable brands, I recall two seminal statements made in our early and recent history that have epitomized the actions of our people over the years. The first of the two is attributed to national hero, the right excellent Samuel Shaw, who has been recorded in the annals of history as responsible for the final abolition of slavery as a result of his Sam Sharp, otherwise known as the Christmas Rebellion of 1831-1832. Sharp declared with steely resilience, I would rather die on my feet than live on my knees. It is perhaps out of that express maxim that a number of Jamaicans have declared that we now bow. Madam Speaker, a crime against humanity committed against a race of people must have a remedy. And the damage to the physical, human, spiritual, and mental being of our people must be paid for and repaired. There must be no retreat on this. Of note is that we are due to meet soon with a group from the United Kingdom who call themselves heirs of slavery and who, in recognition of the wrongs committed by their ancestors, have sought to meet with us to promote remediation and reconciliation. We, after all, are from small island developing states. We're no longer called third world. We are now seen as small island developing states whose economies were ravaged in the past by rampant colonialism and in recent times by climate and other injustices, leaving us entrapped in the mire of underdevelopment. On the tracks and fields, in the halls of academia, in literature, science, tourism, politics, and even in religion, where we dare to create a new religion for the ages in Rastafari. In every element of human endeavor in this world, we did not bow to those who would seem to be larger than life. Yes, we would rather die on our feet than live on our knees, resilient and strong. The other quotation I will cite are the words of Jamaican policeman who became a poet in the United States, considered among the great poets of the Harlem Renaissance, Claude McKay. Claude McKay's poem, If We Must Die, resonates with the theme, celebrating a proud heritage, resilient and strong. And I quote, if we must die, let it not be like hogs, hunted and penned in an inglorious spot, while round us bark the mad and hungry dogs, making their mock at our accursed lot. If we must die, oh, let us nobly die, so that our precious blood may not be shed in vain. Madam Speaker, it is on words such as these that we have fashioned a proud heritage, resilient and strong. With those words in our hearts, we have carved out a space in the world where we can now say, in the words of Alma Norman, anywhere you go, you will find Jamaican men and women, great and humble.
Jamaican men and women. Yes, resilient and strong, Jamaicans have carved out a global diaspora. We have contributed everywhere we find ourselves, being global citizens. In the words of our national motto, we have dared to play our part in advancing the welfare of the whole human race. Madam Speaker, allow me to remind us of our sacred responsibility to transfer this glorious, proud, resilient, and strong heritage to our children. Without this, our children will grow up in the words of right excellent Marcus Messiah Garvey as trees without roots. It is a sacred responsibility of all adults of this country, and in particular, all who sit in political leadership in this space to transfer this knowledge of who we are to our children. Of course, we must never forget that a powerful element of our proud, resilient, and strong heritage is a religious heritage rooted in spirituality, including African spirituality, from Orthodox to Protestant to Apostolic to Revival and Pocomania to Rastafari. We must never... Minister's time for speaking has expired. House Leader. Madam Speaker, the member's time having been expired, uh, I beg to move that the member be allotted 10 minutes to complete in full the presentation. May it please the Minister. The question is that the Minister be allowed 10 minutes to complete her presentation. Those in favor? Aye. Those against? The ayes have it. Minister Green. Thank you, Madam Speaker. We must never forget that with over 1,600 churches, Jamaica holds the Guinness Book of World Records for the most churches per square mile. In this regard, earlier this year, at my request, the Governor General declared March 25 as the National Day of Remembrance of the victims of the transatlantic trade in Africans and chattel enslavement. On that day, we intend to launch a national day for the memory of and solidarity with those whose lives in Africa were interrupted and devalued in over 400 years of African genocide. Madam Speaker, though the focus will be on our national heroes, we must also pay homage to the countless, nameless, and faceless warriors whose battlefields were the plantations, the great houses, the streets, and laterally parliaments and other spaces, including in the hearts and minds of many who were within the reach of their voices. So Madam Speaker, I also pause to salute our many modern day heroes, including the Usain Bolt, and Shelley and Fraser Price, Elaine Thompson Hero, Courtney Walsh, Chris Gale, Miss Lou, Bob Marley, Jimmy Cliff, and so many others, which time does not allow me the luxury to mention by name. I would crave your indulgence and include those students, Madam Speaker, of B.B. Coke High School for their commendable display of resilience and strength in the face of the suffering of a fellow student. Finally, I invite my colleagues, every political, religious, and civic leader to join us in our activities during Heritage Week which is celebrated from October 10 to the 16th. And invite you to look at the, this, the schedule that has been distributed. And also, you will be sent by email the activities right across the island. And so, Madam Speaker, I close today in this honorable George William Gordon House with a reminder that resilience and strength is not in the power and authority we wield at any given moment, nor is it about our position in life. Rather, it is in our ability to be humble and to work for the betterment of all our people, particularly the weak, the poor, the vulnerable, including our elderly, our women, and our girls. As such, let us march forward to play our part in sustaining our proud heritage 
remembering in the words of Bob Marley, I quote, the greatness of a man is not in how much wealth he acquires, but in his integrity and his ability to affect those around him positively. God bless our proud heritage, resilient and strong. God bless our people and the memory of our ancestors who he brought from chattel enslavement to freedom so that we in this house and across Jamaica, that we may all live and serve God and each other. God bless Jamaica. Land land. Thank you, Minister. Madam Speaker, I rise on behalf of the people of St. Thomas Eastern to show our support to observe annually the 11th day of October as Paul Bogle Day. This is an excellent day to celebrate him. On October the 11th, 1865, Paul Bogle, seeking to protest against the oppression and injustice affecting his people, Member, it's a statement by Minister. The response should first come from the opposition spokesperson in the area. So even though your mic was on, I'm going to um, turn your mic off. And if you are making a contribution to support the Minister's presentation, we will take that after. Thank you. You turned off your mic again. Oh, you're yielding. Turn your mic on, please, opposition leader. Turn your mic on. Press, press your mic on. It's not on. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Speaker. <clears throat> I want to thank the, the minister for her presentation this afternoon, outlining the activities for upcoming National Heritage Week, which is a very important week in the life of our country as we celebrate, <coughs> acknowledge, recognize the tremendous sacrifices made by our heroic ancestors uh, leading to our achieving nationhood and are inspiring us in our ongoing quest for building a better Jamaica and developing our people and achieving their hopes and dreams. I just um, want to say how pleased I am to hear that there will be a date in October, I believe it's the 14th, when, the 11th is it, the 11th, that the right excellent Paul Bogle will be commemorated and it will be a special day in his honor. I had actually moved a motion in this house on the 26th of July 2022 last year yes. calling for that very thing. Yes. <clears throat> With recitals summarizing the tremendous courage and leadership though that Paul Bogle showed in St. Thomas and the ultimate sacrifice that he paid with his life. In the case of my motion, I had suggested that the date of commemoration should have been the date of his martyrdom, which is the 24th of October. But I am quite pleased to see that the government has decided to have that date of commemoration be a date in October. And the 11th is the date that the so-called Morant Bay Rebellion yeah, because it's controversial. It's controversial because it's, there are people who regard it as, as an uprising. There are people who regard it as a war. So I'm just saying the original term of describing it is controversial. That's why I say it's called a so-called Morant Bay Rebellion. I think it, it was a much more serious uh, event in our history than perhaps the word rebellion. Um, adequate, you know, it's somewhat inadequate to describe what it really is. And I'm sure in the future, this is something we can look at. But um, I am pleased to see that we will be commemorating the, his memory in that way, because his role in our history is so important. 
1865 was a turning point when the landless and oppressed people of St. Thomas stood up and the system of oppression which gave rise to their determination to fight for their rights in that way uh, suffered a, a somewhat cataclysmic uh, rejection. And although hundreds of people died in it, it did lead to changes which have helped to move Jamaica to the point where we are today. And of course, we are here in George William Gordon House. And George William Gordon was somebody who gave his life as well in that struggle and was a strong supporter of Bogle and Bogle's, the people who followed Bogle. And so it's, it's appropriate that we, here in George William Gordon House, we ha hear the announcement that the 11th day of October each year going forward will be the date to commemorate Paul Bogle. So I, I am happy to see that happen. And uh, my motion will no longer be necessary. Although there is one aspect of the prayer which I would ask be considered, which is for a candlelight um, ceremony each year to commemorate the struggle against slavery across the world, where persons who join in that cause, in that fight, can participate by lighting candles to commemorate this annually. And this was something that I thought would be a take Jamaica to the world in another way. And I would commend that for your consideration, Minister. Uh, Otherwise, we look forward to the activities in the coming week, and we will participate in them as best we can. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Very good use of time. You have turned your mic off, Member Daly. You have pressed the wrong thing. Member Daly, you have pressed the wrong thing. Um, yeah. Could you turn on another mic, Member Daly, if yours is not coming on? Not coming on. That's okay. Turn off your mic. No, um, Member Charles' mic was also on. So I'm going through it. So your mic is now on, Member Daly. Yeah. Uh, Madam um, Speaker. Member Daly from St. Catherine Eastern. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I want to join with the Minister, the Parliament, in our celebration. I look forward every year to this kind of celebration because with all that we are celebrating in this country, National Eras Week, or day, should be one that we are extremely proud of. It is one that has caused us, with the color of our skin, with our background, where we are coming from, to be in this honorable house. So I want to join with you, Minister, in the celebration. Madam Speaker, I have a little concern, and I have been repeating it over and over again. Member Daly, let me just remind you that yeah. the contribution in respect of the response has yeah. already been done, and yeah. you are currently yeah. carrying out a further debate. Thank you. Would you but be so kind as yeah. to go straight to your straight. question? Yeah. Thank you, Member. Um, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I have two questions. One, Madam Speaker, is in regards to our heritage sites to preserve the history that we are so proud of. And two, Madam Speaker, I would love to see, just as what we are going to be doing for Paul Bogle, that we ensure that we speed up the process of the expungement of the record, the criminal record of Marcus Mazaya Garvey. Thank you.
Member Bromberg, member from St. Andrews Southwest. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Um, I wanted to just simply add my, well, to ask two questions, as well as to add my own support to the idea of the Paul Bogle Day on October 11th and uh, the, what we normally do for National Heritage Week and how important that is. So my first question really is around uh, some of what we need to do or what are some of the plans to ensure that our children would come to accept Marcus Garvey's, uh, um, an important quote that he, made, he has made, that the black skin is not a badge of shame, but rather a glorious symbol of national greatness. What are some of the things we are doing to make sure that our young children can be proud of their black skin, their mother tongue, Jamaican language, patois, that we can normalize their kinky hair so it can look like man and it's still okay wherever they are, whether they want to do locks or they want to do braids. What are we doing about that? That's one. Because I believe that's a really good way to pay homage to our national heroes. The second question really arises because as you were naming our heroes, I looked at them. And because my first question was about the black skin, I looked at them and realized that they symbolized the out of many one people. And I then wanted to ask, Minister, because I think the time has come for us to have a debate, a conversation in this Jamaica around class, race, color, yes. skin, poverty. Yes? And I believe, I want to ask you, Minister, if you would agree that that courageous conversation is really needed in a way that prevents us in Parliament or on a political stage from weaponizing the issue of race. From weaponizing the issue of race. Because we have seen it. Because we have seen it. And so I want to ask that question because I believe no, if we, no, uh, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, if some persons can get up in this parliament and talk about the importance of integrity, then I certainly can stand here and talk about us not weaponizing the issue of race. Thank Member you, Madam Charles. Speaker. Member Charles, I Thank know you. that we have a practice of making a statement to support the minister. However, strictly by the standing order, you're really required to ask a question. So would you be so kind? Would you be so kind as to look at your statement very quickly and convert it into a question for the minister? Um, hold a moment, please, Member. Prime Minister. Madam Speaker, I, I want to commend the, the Minister for advising the House and bringing this matter to us and actually ensuring that we have a special day dedicated. My question to the minister, so that I'm in keeping with the standing orders. <laughs> but, uh, will, will the minister give further details as to the government's concrete plans for the construction of a museum in Morant Bay? which, Madam Speaker, is a tangible and definitive way of marking our heritage and ensuring that our Jamaican people can 
feel and interact with our history and with the artifacts that represent our culture, real and tangible things that mark our culture. Yeah. Minister. Minister, you, you have one more question. Madam Speaker, thank you. I rise on behalf of the people of St. Thomas Eastern to show our support and to observe the, and annually the uh, 11th day of October as Paul Bogo Day. This is an excellent day to celebrate him. On October the 11th, 1865, my question comes at the end, but I can ask it now. I noticed, I noticed, on October the 11th, 1865, Paul Bogle seeking to protest against oppression and injustice affecting his people by the Canolian government led an uprising in St. Thomas. I agree that October the 11th is the best day to celebrate Paul Bogle based on that. And I'm asking, after looking at this Heritage Week, I noticed there's nothing for St. Thomas on this this year. So that's my main question. But during the Baptist War, the Morant Bay Courthouse was burnt down to the ground. And Madam Speaker, in my previous State of the Constituency debate, I not only asked the Minister for this particular proclamation, What is your point of order, member? Mad Madam Speaker, I was listening for the question. I still really haven't heard it. And I'm wondering at your latitude today. I am listening, I'm listening, member, and I've heard one question already, and I've observed that the beginning of the formulation of another question very clearly Absolutely. is being Absolutely. posited by the member. So the latitude you were given. Go, member Charles, member from St. Thomas. Thank you again. The member Brown Burke, who loves St. Thomas. Yes, Allow me. They were appointed Princess Margaret and you, right? M member Charles, to your question, please. And my question, and, and I must say, Speaker, that the member, the member, the leader of the opposition stated that, um, what he stated in his request uh, last year, in my maiden speech, which was October the 20th, 2021, I actually asked the member from St. Catherine and the minister to consider a proclamation day. So I must tell the leader of the opposition to thank you for supporting me. But my question to uh, the minister, oh, he wasn't here. My question, my question to the minister is, seeing that we're going to be getting some buses to the rural side, can we plan the day where we can invite almost all of the Jamaican children to St. Thomas Eastern for October the 11th? <laughs> Minister, please turn your mic on. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I will try to um, answer all the questions. I will first start with the leader of the opposition's comments. I want to thank him so much for his comments and to also um, recognize that a motion was moved, um, that we had actually started the work prior to the motion being moved, that we have um, introduced a series of days national recognition of our national heroes. So we, had, we did the Sam Sharp and we have the Garvey Day and so on. But I really want to thank you for giving it, giving it support. And just to indicate that October 11 was selected, October 11 was selected based on consultations with our historians. And I just want to read quickly from the proclamation it says, and whereas the right excellent Paul Bogue, national hero, was a man of notable acumen and character, 
displaying leadership and courage in the face of insurmountable odds, having no regard for the potential harm he would face from an entrenched, dehumanizing, and oppressive system, and whereas there is at present no knowledge of the date of his birth, save that he was born and lived in Stony God in the parish of St. Thomas, that it is deemed fitting that in lieu of his date of birth, that the most appropriate day on which to celebrate his achievements and solidify his memory in the minds of every Jamaican, including those not yet born, is the day in which his war for the dignity, integrity, and better working and livable conditions of his people began, being the 11th day of October in the year 1865. And this proclamation, I'll just read it close. It says, now therefore I, Patrick Clinton Allen, member of the Order of the Nation, Knight Grand Cross of the Most Distinguished Order of St. Michael and St. George, Knight of Grace of the Most Venerable Order of the Hospital of St. John of Jerusalem, Governor General of Jamaica, do hereby proclaim and make known that the 11th day of October shall be observed annually as Paul Boga Day. And so we did research, and you know, the historians all agreed that it should be the 11th. And I should just highlight that if you notice, we do floral tributes to our heroes, and we do not call it wreath laying because we celebrate their birth, not their death. And that's why we would not have celebrated Paul Boga's death, but more in terms of something that was done positively to impact on the lives of Jamaicans, then and um, now and in the future. Um, I think there was a slight oversight by the Member of Parliament from St. Thomas. We do have an activity listed here which is being done in collaboration with the Jamaica Cultural Development Commission and the the um, National Library, the, the library, the St. Thomas Library Service. We will next year plan a major event in St. Thomas. By then, the museum would have been far advanced and Prime Minister did ask the question. I came equipped with the information. I just asked them to load, to load up the images, but we have been meeting we, <laughs> we, have been, we have been meeting with, we have been meeting with Chase. The Prime Minister gave the instructions that the Morant Bay Courthouse be restored and that a state-of-the-art museum be established there. We are far advanced in the design um, in a few, few seconds, I think they will be able to put the images up. I'm quite impressed with the work that has been done so far by the JNHT and by Chase and our technical people in the ministry. Prime Minister, we have heard you. That, and symbolism. Real thing. A real thing. They, they, it involves also partnership with the Institute of Jamaica, who will be responsible for the artifacts and the design of the internal display. But work is far advanced, and I'm very, very happy that we have been able to make it. Many, many years ago, there are those who tried to restore the courthouse, and the idea of a museum was floated. But now we're talking about tangible things that will be done. And I'm proud that we have been able to achieve that. Um, the, in relation to candlelight, the leader of the opposition mentioned um, a candlelight ceremony. Yes, we plan to do that, but we plan to do that um, on March 25, which has been proclaimed National Day of Remembrance of the Victims of the Transatlantic Trade in Africans and Chattel Enslavement. And this was again proclaimed by the Governor General, and we will be planning a, a candlelight ceremonies right across the island on March 25. The expungement or, um, that was um, 
mentioned here by the member from St. Catherine, I just want to remind members that we actually took a bill to Parliament where we made sure that we walked the talk, that we ensured that the records of our national heroes were expunged, including that of Marcus Garvey. And, and not only that, but we, we asked that all the freedom fighters were also taken into consideration. So we have already done that. What we have no control over is the expungement of Garvey's record in the United States. But we are doing our work in relation to that. Last year, the Prime Minister write, wrote to the President, and we will, Biden, and we will continue to have those discussions with those who are actively working on the expungement in the United States, and we will continue to press the administration for the expungement. Um, Minister? We, Minister, are you almost finished answering your questions? You are at 10 minutes in answering. Yes, questions I'm, so I'm far. wrapping up. I'm wrapping up. Thank you, Minister. And just to indicate to members that we have a, a full transcript this thick of the trial of Garvey, and it is available for research. So, any member here who would like to see, see it and go through it, it's available. The JNHT had put it together, and it's available. So we're working, working, working when it comes to our culture and our heritage. Finally, the, the member from um, St. Andrew actually raised some interesting, interesting points. What are we doing about schools and addressing the matter of our culture and our African culture and our kinky here and all of that. Well, there is a policy that now exists that the Minister of Education announced. And further to that, we have developed a program that we're through the JNHT that we're taking into schools so that when they teach history and civics, they will include our experience as Jamaicans and our African retentions as part of, of the curriculum. Relation to, um, to take into Parliament the discussion about class, race, color, poverty, and so on, I don't mind. It's not a bad idea because what we will, what will come out of that is to recognize our own internal prejudices and how we have acted over the years towards each other. I know that the late Edward Sayaga suffered very much from that. And myself and Minister Mackenzie, as products of West Kingston and his protégés, we used to say the only difference between Edward Sayaga and us was the color of his skin. He was browning. He was a browning. But it would be, yes, he was a browning. It would be interesting to hear, to hear the discussions in this parliament about race and prejudice. The thank you, Madam Speaker. I hope I did not exceed the 10 minutes. And I thank my colleagues for listening. Thank you so much, Minister.